Thank you very much. Five minutes after four o'clock here at uh, Canoe FM. And uh, we are very delighted to have a guest with us this afternoon. Robert Wright is the uh, gentleman's name. Or do I call you Rob? You can call me Rob. Mike. All right. Yeah. I'll call you Rob. Rob Wright. And, and Rob is an author. Who uh, you live locally? I do. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. How long have you lived here in the? Oh, Highlands? close to thirty years now. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's it's a thrill to be here. By the way, you were back Just, when there were corduroy roads for. Would see that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. With the loggers going by and everything else, right? For sure. Well, yeah. it is really nice to have you here. I had the pleasure of reading your new book called "A Long Paddle Home." And, uh, yeah, that's it. Hold that's it up it. to the camera. But right we're, right. we're doing this on Facebook Live, by the way. So if you want to uh, have a look at Robert's interview, uh, just go to Mike Jaycock on Facebook, and uh, you'll be able to, to see that. It'll be available uh, online later as well. Now, uh, Robert, one of the things I found really fascinating about your background is that uh, you've been a, an outdoor educator for oh, nigh on 30 years. Correct. Yeah, uh, you know, that's right. So, yeah. you know, that's a uh, that's a big career in itself. It is. It How is. on earth did you get to decide to write a book? So what happened is every time I did a venue or a group of people, right, I would write short stories. It's just something in me. I would write these short stories. Really? So then these short stories would just go and I'd hand them out. And then one short story wasn't supposed to become a book, <laughs> but it became a book. Isn't and that yeah, something? and so the short story was about the camaraderie that that happens when you are in a group of people and you're camping, and that's all it was supposed to be. And next thing you know, I had a novel on my hand. Isn't that mm. wonderful? Yeah. Uh, now the uh, this whole process of going from a little story to a book right. that that didn't happen overnight, though. No, it took me about four years. Wow. Yeah. It just kept progressing. I couldn't stop. Once I started writing, like I wrote the short story, and then I wanted to follow these characters. It was almost like I wasn't writing it. <laughs> it was like I just was transcripting it. You, you, know were, what I mean? you were on the journey with them. It was truly, honestly, yes. Isn't yeah. that It was fabulous. bizarre. It was bizarre. I must say. It was bizarre. Now, when this story started, mm -hmm. did you have any idea of the twists and turns it would take through the book? Honestly, Mike, none whatsoever. I had no clue. Wow. I just wrote. And you know, it's funny. I, I never had a plot. I didn't have a plot in mind. And it just kept coming. And there was days when I'd write, and it just wouldn't happen. So I just gave it up. I just walked away from it. And then the next, I'd be driving or going wherever I'm going, or I'd be listening to something, especially out in the woods, right? I actually wrote it in a teepee, one of my teepees, right? So, yeah, it's it's quite fascinating how That's it happened. It's amazing yeah. how mm -hmm. it uh, came together. Right. Now, the, the story embraces a number of encounters out in the woods and on the lakes. Right, right. And and portages as well. Boy, and some of those portages sounded pretty brutal. They're to pretty be wild. Yeah, they were yeah, pretty yeah. wild. Yeah. Uh, are, are any of these from things that you've seen or lived through? 100%. So the stories that you read in this book, not the stories, but the journey that the um, the people take in this book, yeah, I absolutely took that journey. Like, I've been on every site that is in this book. I've walked every portage that's in this book. I needed to have firsthand knowledge, right? Yeah. Yeah, I absolutely did. And I drew on my 50-plus years of experience in the wilderness and teaching people uh, and, you know— Talking to the animals, if you will, not like Dr. Doolittle, but you understand what I mean, right? <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I just, uh, I took, I, I absolutely drew on that. I mean, the bear claw around my neck is from my best friend, a black bear. So he, he taught me more stuff than any book could teach me. But Incredible. the point being is, yeah, so all these animals that are in this book, wolves, man, I've had many encounters with wolves, all positive, every single one positive. So they taught me tons, too. So they're really heavy in the book. Now, Tell me, in this whole uh, whole story, there's a, a lot of activity on the water in Correct. canoes. People in canoes, our hero is in a canoe. Of course. Y you obviously love canoeing. Absolutely. And this became really a, a, a bit of a backbone for the story because it connects so much of the geography. Right. And the reason I did that, Mike, first and foremost, I absolutely, I, I live in a canoe. I 
I love it. I'll sleep in a canoe if I can do it, right? But the point <laughs> being, man, maybe I'm, anyway, regardless, the point being is, right? So for me, um, as I'm paddling, it's almost like every paddle that I take, every pull on that paddle, as it slices through the water, is just taking me to another journey, right? It's just taking me to something I don't know where I'm going to. And the other thing about canoeing, and the reason I used it in the book, is it is an allegory for life. Everybody's paddling their own canoe, right? That's true. And the problem is, is that everybody's carrying baggage. Well, if you have ever done a portage, <laughs> you don't want to carry baggage, right? So the baggage I'm referring to is our expectations. How true. Drop the expectations and you will be able to carry lightly. The, so the fella in the book, Stephen, he needs to drop a lot of stuff before he can get through this. <laughs> amen, amen. Right, right. We'll get to that story in a moment. Right. Uh, one, one of the things that jumps out right away is that there are a lot of local place names oh, wow. in the book. And, yeah. and uh, uh, you know, uh, there are places that anybody that reads this, certainly in our geographical area, will be able to relate to it. Did the knowledge of the geography help the story? Without question. I know it intimately, like the back of my hand. I needed to promote our gorgeous area that we live in. I need to promote it. Not only promote it, protect it, right? right. I wanted people to love it. So I, they can, when they read this book, they will walk. They can walk to every single site and every trail in this book, and it is exactly as depicted in the book, exactly. Wow. So. There's, there's quite a cast of characters in there your is. book. Oh, boy, oh, boy. We yeah. meet some good ones and some bad ones, some very yeah. bad ones, actually. Yeah, that's true. And uh, these these characters, did any of these come out of your uh, your experience in the, the forest and camping, canoeing? More so with my interactions with people through my teaching. Mm. Um, I've met a myriad of people. And, uh, yeah, so I purposely wrote the book so that um, the characters in the book, any reader that reads this book will be able to superimpose the faces of people in their lives on the characters of the book. I did it purposely. That's I good. absolutely did it purposely. And I, I basically, um, did I draw from my experiences? Without question. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, without question. Yeah. Because yeah. I, I got to some of those parts where uh, there were some rather nasty people yep and people that uh, we would all vilify for 100 what they do out in the wilderness and i thought to myself i w i wonder if if rob has uh, had encounters of that nature I, I i have i absolutely have and yeah the things that transpire in the book they are well seriously it's a piece of fiction but aside from that there are very real encounters within mm. this book that i've interceded that are just under the guise of steven style right Right. Mm -hmm. Now, Stephen, your mm -hmm. hero, mm -hmm. I'll call him a hero. He is the main protagonist in the book, but he's not really a, a hero. He's, he, he, right. He, he's, he's, he's just a guy. He's a guy yeah. who's living the story, so to Correct. speak. Correct. How did you how did you form this guy? Stephen Stiles is a, um, a very reclusive person. Yeah. Right? He, he prefers the company of animals over people he'd like to sleep in a canoe 100 percent, right <laughs> so a lot of i guess a lot of me is in steven but however the point is is that with steven um in order to survive what he has to survive he's gonna have to learn to trust people and more importantly trust himself see in truth he's hiding from himself mm -hmm. so he has to trust himself in order to and embrace people so the very first chapter in this book he all of a sudden meets some people who he absolutely just falls in with. Yeah. And he's like flabbergasted by the whole thing. So it's like, <laughs> how did this happen? Right. So, yeah. So it's in order for him to survive what's coming in this book, he must embrace these people. He well, has to. One of the exciting undertones throughout the whole book and a major part of it is this mysterious mm. entity yeah. uh, that is moving through the woods and through the dark and and uh, uh, what it, what is that mysterious entity all about? Okay, without giving too much away. All right, I can't I can't give too much away on this. No, one, no, right? no, no. We want but people however, to buy the um, book. <laughs> the entity is. I never put a face to it because I want people to put their own faces on it, mm. whatever it might be. But what it is is it's it is something which challenges 
Stevens version of reality, mm -hmm. right? And it's, it's, I can say that the entity is a physical manifestation of the power of the wilderness. Oh, I like that. Okay, like so it's that, a yeah. physical manifestation yeah, of yeah. what the conglomerate whole is. I can buy that. All right. Yeah. I, the manifestation, and you're right, I did. I, I put an, an entity to it, mm -hmm. but it wasn't a, a perfected image that no, I had. I had a general image right. of what this was, was right. happening. And it provides some very exciting and very surprising moments through the book, which obviously add to the, uh, the not, not just the enjoyment, but the surprise of the story. Right. Yeah. 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 I, that was purposely done. Yeah. I, I wanted to take you literally on a life journey. Mm. Well, this all takes place over two months period of time. Yeah. But I wanted to do, I wanted to get you in to that world. And that's the world that, you and I both live right here. I mean, there's yeah. stuff that takes place in Minden. There's stuff that takes place in Dorset. There's certain events that take place at the Frost Center, which I changed the name to, but regardless, the <laughs> point being is, yeah, so there's there's many, many different things that take place. At, now, uh, your yeah. hero, Stephen, mm -hmm. <clears throat> he is very challenged to understand this entity that is right. out there, as you say, and, right. and he's being challenged by it. Is any of this rooted in indigenous lore? For sure. For sure, okay? Every indigenous culture, every indigenous culture, including the European culture, they all had creatures that wandered just outside of our eyesight. They were, some were evil, and some were neither or, and some were here to teach, right? So they, um, they really didn't fit any known description of any animal. Mm. They just didn't fit it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So with... Um, I guess with the with the, with the native side of things, if I may, um, there is a, a a complete and utter belief that everything is connected. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So everything is connected, including the moon, the stars, the sun. So yeah, and this this is sort of that thing that moves through it all. Yeah. And and you know I felt that in the book, and I liked that part about it. Mm -hmm. I really felt a, a comfort with with that part of the, the storytelling. Well, thanks. Now, this is a, a, a great mystery book. Like, it's, it's got a good mystery to it. It's, it's got a love story, and it's, it it's got some some real-life uh, human interactions that are are uh, uh, pretty, uh, uh, pretty bold at times. Mm -hmm. What would you like people to take away after having read the book, besides the fact that it's, it's a good read and it's a good mystery? <clears throat> I would say that I wrote the book as if it was a movie, right? I want people to put themselves in that movie. Um, I want them to ask themselves the question, what would I do? Mm. If faced with the same, uh, the same questions. So life-altering questions. Right? What would you do? Yeah. Do you stay static or do you actually take the paddle and go and move down that trail? Like, yeah. is that what you're going to do? And if you're going to do that, it's the only way you're going to grow. Right. So that's what I want people to take from this. I want them to. And another point of this, even though it's got some really scary moments in it, I want people to stop being afraid of the woods. <laughs> I just do. I mean, I don't know how you felt about it after you read it, but I mean... I just want people to be stop being afraid of the woods. Understand that they are just part of it. it they're not against it. They're just part of it. Well, it is a, a very satisfying read, and I, I, I wonder, how, how has the response to the book been? Okay, I was ex incredibly nervous about publishing this book, and the reason being it was published by Tellwell, which is out in B.C., and um, even they had to talk me into it because I was like, I, I was nervous because I wasn't sure how people were going to take my version of the wilderness. Mm -hmm. Now, I've spent my life in the wilderness, so I wasn't sure how they were going to take to it, right? And and so I, I was literally nervous about it. And then all of a sudden, I just something just clicked, and I said, just do it. What are you waiting for? <laughs> so I let it go. I, I, I put you. it out there, and what's fascinating is um, I'm so glad I did it. 
I'm so glad I did it because it, it, it's just it's 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 been cool. That's great. Yeah, that's great. Been, yeah, and and the reaction I gather has been positive as well. It has been. You know what? And I'm absolutely flabbergasted by it. I, like I, I'm I'm I don't. I like to consider myself relatively meek. I'm like Stephen. You know what I mean? Like, I want to just hide, All right? But anyway, regardless, the point being is, um, I've had nothing but positive reviews. Isn't I've that had, great? and you know, which is, and and I must say this: it's almost like I didn't write the book. I did, but I. It's almost like I didn't write it. It's like it just came through me. And I know that might sound weird, but that's how it was. And so, um, when people, it's been nothing but positive reviews. So, so much so that. Um, this is actually the third part of four books. This is the only one I had the courage to publish. <laughs> so if this one does all right, then I will con- I will push out the next one, which is the sequel to A Long Paddle Home. I'm not going to put the title out yet, but I want people to follow Stephen and his companions further, right? We'll see how this one does. I'll Excellent. Put it Excellent. Right. Right. How exciting for you. Yeah, it is. It's great. Oh, my great. goodness. And it's more exciting to be sitting here with you. Well, come on. I mean, on. it's incredible. I mean it. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's awesome. Now, yeah. let's tell people how they can get a copy of the book. Absolutely. Amazon.ca. Yeah. Um, it's on Indigo. It's on Barnes & Noble. Wow. I believe it's on, uh, it's in the UK through, uh, I believe it's through the book depository. Um, and I have heard people say that they have purchased it directly through chapters and through Coles. Excellent. So, right. That's very thrilling all around, isn't it? It is. It, it, it really is. Yeah. It is. And I just, I just love the fact that people are really taken to Stephen. Isn't They're it? really taken to Good Stephen. Thing. They're really taken to the other characters in the book. So it's really great. You know, you've got to be careful because, you know, with this kind of uh, early acceptance and, and support, you might want to sleep in a bed instead of a canoe. <laughs> That's so awesome. Yeah. Well, you're right. You're absolutely right. Robert, yeah, thanks true. for joining us this afternoon. Congratulations. It really is a, a fascinating read. And and for all the reasons we've just discussed, it's uh, it's um, it's like a good meal. You know, like it, it really, wow, Mike. really is High a, 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 a great, uh, a great story. Thank and you. I, I love the mysticism that's a part of it. Um, Stephen, at times, I think he's a bit of a dough head, you yep. know, but as you say, he kind of plods forward and, and, mm-hmm. and gets there. Mm-hmm. It's uh, yeah, it's a, a great book. A Long Paddle Home is the name of the book. And the author is Robert Wright. And he's been our guest this afternoon. Thanks for doing this. Oh, you've been wonderful, Mike. Thanks ever so much for having me. Great to meet you. Wonderful. Really great good. meeting you too. Time is now 23 minutes after four o'clock here at Canoe FM. Mm-hmm.